Who Human is a third-person action RPG from Silicon Knights. It was released onto the Xbox 360 in 2008. The game is notorious for having had an extremely long development cycle. In fact, it was in development for about 10 years. It was originally slated to be released on four discs onto the PlayStation 1 in around 1999. For various reasons, it was passed between various developers and eventually sold to Microsoft and released in 2008. Like I said, the game is notorious as being one of the most disappointing and underappreciated games on the console uh, in, in the 360's history. Now we're going to touch on, on it. It's, it was originally part of a planned trilogy of games, and believe me, you're not going to see any further games in the trilogy, but such was the reaction to, uh, to, to Human. Y- you'll see exactly why as we go through this one. <sighs> Mostly the points that we're going to be covering are bad points, because there are mainly bad points about the game. There are some good points, which are what we're going to touch on first of all. Firstly, the story of the game is... It shows some promise. It could have been quite good. There's certain aspects which are quite interesting. It feels like there's a lot of uh, background to the environment, even if it's only lightly touched upon. Now, a lot of that is down to the fact that it's based heavily on Norse mythology, along with um, things like Beowulf and stuff like that. So I'm not sure you can really give Silicon Knights a lot of points for that. And the parts where it does fall down are where they kind of add their own touch to it. So, I mean, I guess if you want, you can say that the, some of the good points are the uh, the story. But again, yeah, a little bit generous to give them props for that, I suppose. There are points where some of the voice acting is very good. Crispin Freeman, um, who plays Heimdall, is, uh, as ever, fantastic. He's always good. And so that's kind of like the only high point in the game. Uh, in addition, the environments in the game are aesthetically very well done. They stand out and they're very striking, and, and even by today's standards, they, they stand up very well. If you look at them, they're, they're quite unique to this game. They're not anything groundbreaking, I'll admit you that, but they do stand out as one of the higher points of the game, and they deserved a much better game than, than is provided elsewhere here, but yeah, certainly... Uh, with the vo- with certain aspects of the voice acting and the story, they're what stand out as the the only slight redeeming features the title has. And on that note, we move on to the um, less stellar aspects of the game, if if that's what they can be called. First off, we'll look at Balder. Your protagonist in the proceedings is mm, a bit disappointing, to say the least. He just feels so bland and so tedious. He's kind of like a breeze block on wheels, um, and that's not just in his mobility, that's that's in his overall, just personality-wise. He's so... I think they were going for stoic and brooding type of thing, but all they've really ended up with is someone so bland and, and just dull, and who just seems like he's got no thoughts going on, rather than being someone that sits there and broods and, and has a mystery to them, he just seems like there's nothing going on, like he's just a complete meathead, and it's really disappointing, and it's really hard to sort of in any sort of these RPG games, you're supposed to try and project yourself to a certain extent into the character, and I, there's one thing to be argued for a blank slate but feeling like he's a bit lobotomized is kind of going a little bit too far the other way, so that's extremely disappointing, and the guy's just oh, it, it, it does drive you mad after a little while In fact, that kind of sets the scene for all of the characters in the game, not just their personalities, which are varied and, and I suppose, to a greater or lesser extent, follow the same sort of thing as Balder. They're either cliched, hackneyed, oh my god, I'm a a soldier man, I will hit everything and I will be all about the manliness, or the incredibly slutty um, aspect of the the, the, the essence of the the world tree and stuff. It's all very hackneyed. What you have as well is the character designs. It's hard to put my finger on how it works with the character design because some of them are very good, whereas other are just awful. I mean, we'll have a look here at the um, at the scene where you meet a lot of the gods when Balder goes to have a feast with his um, family of gods, and it's just weird because some of them are really good, uh, and yet some of them. You just kind of just want to slap your palm to your head and go, why, what was going on with your design there? Who would choose that? And don't get me started on um, on Heimdall's techno glasses. That's amazing. I mean, i got to get me some of those. 
Wait. With his weird, like, the code beaming down on his gl eyeglasses that yes. magically appear on his face. It's... Well, in the old days, you used to have this thing of, like, It's magic! We don't have to explain it! This game actually manages to go with, It's technology! We don't have to explain it! Nothing makes sense! And it really, an it really does my nut in. Um, like, take no for example as well, there. when um, they're taught, you, you go and learn about, like, the augmentations to your body, and you can choose whether to go natural or, or augmented or biomechanically engineered. You sort of go, yeah, I'll be biomechanically engineered, and then whoosh, suddenly you, like, get this weird robotic, like, pincer thing come down and poke you with spiky bits, then inject you unceremoniously, dump you back on the floor, and then you're in this vat of water. Who would do that? I d I can't really see myself going, do you know what? I'm going for that. The qu the thing is, you either knew it was going to happen, in which case, why would you? Yeah, sure, that's fine, I'm totally up for that. Or, they've not told you about it, and you've gone into this blind. Which is a bit of a dick move, if I'm perfectly honest. So, you know, not exactly endearing me to the world values here, okay, people? Work with me, at least give me some sort of warning about the weird, crazy shit you're going to do to me before you actually do it. Have they not heard of a consent form in this universe? Apparently not. Going back to the theme of character design as well, early on in the game we meet Hel, which is Loki's daughter, the, the mistress of the underworld, and oh my god, the design! That's, that's just nasty! I mean, I know they're going for Techno Norse, which is an interesting design choice in itself, but the kind of half melty skin robotic thing... I, the thing is, they're obviously trying to make it look, make her look feminine, while also melty. It's a really horrible thing. Or maybe that's what they were going for, I guess. But it's just, ah, it, oh, it's really off-putting, and it's so at odds with everything else that's in the game. I mean, yeah, they're trying to show corruption and evil and stuff like that. I get, but you know, it's it's just not right to me, and it's just horrible. Oh, and also the uh, the plunging neckline. Keeping it classy there, Silicon Knights. Keeping it classy. Nothing like having a... You've got to have the obligatory plunging neckline on your evil this female character, even if she is mostly robot. Ugh, it's just not nice. If we take a moment as well to, to touch on the character acting, one particular example is Heimdall, played by Crispin Freeman. Now, Crispin Freeman is excellent, and he delivers his lines really well, but the way it's written is awful. I mean, the guy is plainly, from the start, keeping secrets from the protagonist, Boulder. But the guy couldn't be more shifty if he was a Scooby-Doo villain. I mean, he might as well be twirling a moustache, looking, like, glancing his eyes left and right every time he says anything. <laughs> it's actually quite funny. Um, if it, well, it would be funny if it wasn't for the fact they're trying to be, like, serious and dramatic and, and, and mysterious and all that sort of thing. It's just... It's a perfect example of how bad the, the writing is, and it's a shame because they've got some stellar voice actors here. Like I said, I'm going to eulogize about how brilliant Crispin Freeman is in everything he does. Uh, he's wasted. So bad. I mean, he, he, he does a miracle job trying to make any of these lines halfway sensible, and he pulls it off some of the time. But even he can't pull off some of this rubbish, and it... It, it's another example of where it just absolutely kills any immersion or any draw into the into the game absolutely dead. Another example would be things like the explanation of the sentient weapons that the characters have. The Ragnarok weapon that uh, Balder is supposed to wield, which changes depending on which one you're wielding, which kind of doesn't really work because you can change out between swords and axes and pole arms and sticks and all this sort of thing and yet they're all supposed to be the same weapon which is a bit weird but the idea is that a malevolent spirit has been imprisoned in the weapon that boulder uses you you see the um the weaponsmith telling you all about it and, and it's sort of fighting to get away and it's uncontrollable and things like that my question would be who would use a weapon like that i mean seriously a weapon that is actively trying to escape or kill you and things like that. I, d I know they try and explain why it's better if we use it than anyone else does. It. Just destroy it! Don't use it! I mean, God, who wants a weapon that if you stop concentrating for one second it will just leap out and start murdering your friends or in fact you? It's design choices like that that just they don't make any sense. And it's, it's just really daft and you just 
I get what they're trying to go for, like it's all big and powerful and dangerous and yeah, we're, we're capturing monsters and stuff and putting them to our will and we're doing the big thing by using them and creating ethical questions, but it's just poorly implemented in the actual reality of, oh dear god, why not just seal it in a big vault? I mean, you seal vault, uh, Loki in a big vault, why not seal this thing in a big vault where it's all safe? Just doesn't make sense, and again, really detracts from the experience. One thing that seems like quite a small thing, but actually turns out to be quite important, is the way that the loot and the inventory systems are managed. Now, this game has a lot, and I mean a lot of loot. They've really put some time into creating lots and lots and lots and lots of different things that you can find. Be they weapons, armor, runes, uh, creation, blueprints, everything like that. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things that you can collect. The problem is, is none of them feel very unique. It's all to do with the, the style of how they've presented everything. Everything is presented with a different coloured um, sort of icon, so like all feet um, items in the inventory look the same. They're all either a green, blue or purple foot symbol. All the helmets are the same, they're all a green, purple or blue foot um, the helmet symbol and things like that. And, Admittedly, when you actually put them on, they slightly change the way you look and things, but they, there's not any variety. There's a, there feels a real disconnect between what you're finding and what you're actually wearing. At least in things like MMOs, they try and differentiate things a little bit. You get like a little icon of what the item is and things like that. And MMO seems to be really what they've been going with. They've tried to copy the sort of um, Warcraft look in that different colour represents different quality of items and things like that, but it's all so stat heavy and there's no real attention paid to aesthetics. And for a single player RPG type thing, you really do need to have some aesthetic care taken because otherwise you're not going to care about what what the item is. It all just feels like swapping one card for another and, and upping stats as opposed to actually putting on loot. It, it, for anyone that doesn't really play RPGs, that's probably not going to make much of a difference. It's probably not going to make any sense. It kind of sounds like nitpicking. I guess it is nitpicking to a certain extent, but... It's that suspension of disbelief, which I go on and on and on about. But it is really important, and, and if if you don't have any sense of the things that you're collecting actually being items, as opposed to just bits of computer code, there's no immersion, and you don't really care, and you don't feel like you've gained anything. And that's how it feels in, in Too Human. It feels like you're just collecting bits of electronic stuff, rather than actual items. And that really, really hurts the game. But the main reason that this game is so loathed, and, and the reason it kind of falls flat is, above all else, the combat system. Now, the game is basically built on its combat system. The idea, it, was, it was touted as being a revolutionary new fancy combat system for action, promising free-flowing action and, and fighting and things like that. And while I get the theory behind it, and I can see what they were going for, it doesn't work at all. Well... It, there are moments, bare moments, where it does work. Um, the idea of the combat system is is to make a free-flowing, a kinetic action-based combat system, where you flow and chain from one enemy to another, and you sort of sh ping between different enemies. It's almost a bit like Sonic tried to do in some of its action um, games, and again, that didn't work either. Um, it, it problem is, is, rather than feeling like frenetic and and really actiony, it just feels a bit frantic and a bit unguided, like unanchored. You kind of you you lose the chain of your combat very easily, mainly because of the camera, which we're going to touch on. But th the problem is, is you're trying to chain between different enemies, and the camera doesn't really help with that. But even just trying to aim in the direction of your character, uh, th sorry, in the direction of the enemy you're trying to hit, doesn't really work. It you end up having uh, the problem where you'll be nicely chaining, but then you start to run out of enemies, and then you kind of just miss. And so rather than shooting towards your enemy, you just swing in midair, and it ruins the, the combo. And so it's just really quite annoying. Also, they don't really help themselves, because the one point of the, the combat where it actually starts to work is when you actually start to get a chain going. And th that actually appeals. It's quite cool, and you, you feel like you're, you're master of your own destiny, and you actually start to feel a little bit badass if I'm honest um, but the problem is is that either comes to an end by dodgy camera work or by you not being able to get to the nearest enemy but the, what they also do is they insert these enemies that shoot rockets at you from miles and miles and miles and miles away which if they hit knock you on the floor 
I see this as something of a design flaw. I mean, admittedly you want challenge and you don't want to make it too easy, but actively inserting loads of things that ruin the only, and I mean, do mean the only aspect of your game which is anyway halfway enjoyable, seems unwise to me. And so these rocket motherfuckers, oh god, you, every time you just hear that whistling rocket noise, and you're just like, oh god, there goes my fun again, just nothing. And then you have to search out while getting, you have the mobs chasing after you in a sort of Benny Hill style, while you go, must get to the rocket guys, and then you can kill them, and then you can get back to desperately trying to have at least some fun from this title. I just don't get why they're putting those in because it just it, it it's counterintuitive it ruins the only part of their game that's anyway halfway playable and it's just stupid another aspect as well is the boss fights i mean you come to the first major boss of the game which is the the big sort of grindy robot thing that you you fight at the big that you see in the first cutscene and instead of focusing on like the nice flowing combat that they the main game seems to be focused on they just completely throw it out the window and you've got a big lumbering beast that you basically have to wade up to hit until it starts beating you too much and then you run and get some help and then you run back again and then you hit it some more and then you run back There's, I don't I don't get why they've done that again it really breaks the pacing you've based your entire game on a fr fast free phone frenetic combat system and then you just piss that all up a tree for the boss fights I mean I know boss fights can be hard because essentially you've got to put one big dude and then you fight him there's ways and means, you know, and if you, you're based on a fast frenetic combat, don't then suddenly change it and go, well, I hope you've brought a big stick, because you're going to have to beat this thing for a long time until it falls over. It, it, it just, it, there's no consistency, and it's really annoying. And, as I said, none of it is helped by the camera. The camera hates you. It wants you dead. Like, properly dead. Like, I don't know, like you interfered with its sister or something like that. I don't know. It, it, it hates you. You can change the distance it is from you, from uh, but you tend to have three settings. You have, like, in your armpit, slightly behind your head, or eight miles away! None of which is especially helpful. You can't have the two close-in ones, because then you can't see what in the hell you're doing. Which, again, when you're trying to pick out enemies in a nice combo chain, bit awkward. But then the one from 800 miles away makes you feel really disconnected from the action. Like, you're just playing, like, oh, I think that speck in the distance is me. And those other 8 million specs are possibly the enemies. I don't know whether I'm dying or not, but I'm having a wonderful time, I can tell you. Now, part of the problem with the camera is that you can't really control it. Uh, because they've taken the, um, the left and right analog sticks as the combat sticks, so you aim to hit using both sticks, they've removed any real ability to control where the camera's aiming, especially in the middle of combat. You do have a button, uh, one of the bumper buttons, to f to suddenly centre the camera looking over your shoulder, so looking straight forward. What that does is it means that you don't have any nuance of camera, you can only snap to forward, uh, otherwise you're at the mercy of the rather poor camera work. The camera doesn't follow quite the way you want it. It's always looking somewhere other than where you actually want it to be. It's, I suppose it's a natural consequence of the combat system, but it really causes a massive problem. It's so frustrating, and it just ruins the, what could have been at least a halfway serviceable combat mechanic, maybe. But that's the thing. You, you, you're fighting, and suddenly you want to, to move the camera, so all you can do is hit this button and whack! You're there. It, it's so jarring, it actually like, feels like giving you some sort of whiplash, which is an achievement for a game in which you're not moving. It actually makes your neck hurt, even though you're not moving your neck, so... Uh, it's just poorly implemented, and it is by far, by far the most annoying and most brutally game-ruining part of the game, which, considering some of the aspects, is quite an achievement. I mean, that tells you how bad the camera is in this game. I've never come across a camera this bad. This is actually worse than the Cameron One Chan Barma, Barra Bikini Samurai Squad. How do you do that? You've got to be trying. It's like they went out and go, right, how can we make this impossible to play? I know. <laughs> Let's just make the camera aim somewhere else. Oh. All in all, with Two Human, the, the principle of the game is a good idea. There's a lot of aspects that could have been pretty good, that, that could have, with the proper application, been quite an interesting story and could have gone on and been the, the trilogy that they hoped to be. But the problem with it all is it's just so horribly realised uh, that the implementation, the design, and pretty much at every turn there's, there's just some bad decision that, that just ruins the potential of any aspect of the game. Now, while the gameplay itself isn't the most offensive thing ever made, it's not. It serves what it has the brief glimpses of fun. 
there are moments where you can enjoy this game. Very, very brief, glim like, s segmented areas. But there are moments where it works. Admittedly, Im almost immediately, other aspects like the camera or poor design choices immediately curtail that and stomp all over until it's a burning husk. But still, there are aspects which make it playable, which is more than can be said for other titles. It's just that every single aspect has far, far, far more wrong with it than it has right. I can count on like the finger on the fingers of a blind carpenter the number of good aspects in the game, but I can't possibly count all of the ways it's wrong and all of the ways it's just oh painful to play. And painful to play is really the problem with the game. I can't quite nail down specifically why it's terrible, but I understand why it's so hated. It's a pain to play. It hurts to play. For illustrative purposes, when I was playing Final Fantasy XIII 2 to compile footage for that review, I took it took about 8, 9, 10 hours before I was starting to get, like, burnout on it, before I was like, I have to play this, no. With Too Human, it took an hour and a half, two hours in, before I was actually physically having to make myself still play it. Such was the level of, of unenjoyment in, in the process. It became more like work than it did actual enjoyment, which is not good in a game. If, if you are, if it's hurting to play, it's not good. And that's the overall summary of, of Too Human. Though not a huge amount of it is taken on its own massively offensive or like stand out terrible, just the amalgamation of all of the poor choices and all of the drudgery and all of the, the, the disappointment, it all comes together to really drag everything down so that the, there's no real one thing that you can hang your hat on as being a redeeming feature. It's all just bad and there's no solace to be taken anywhere. And that's the problem with the overall picture of it. Everything just drags you down and so it, it hurts to play and that's all that can really be said. It's, it, it, it's painful and that's about it really.